Yes. All right. I'm going to do the demonstration on how to create a Pinewood Derby car in the class. First of all, you need to come up with a design. I figured I had to come up with a lot of designs today, so the best way to do that was for me to go on the internet. So I'm using my iPad here, and I went to a website, which is called pinewoodpro.com, and it has a bunch of cars here. I'm going to pick out a car that I'm going to create during this class period. And I'm going to find one of some interest here. I'm going to go ahead and maybe create that one here. Just like creep. There we go. All right, I'm going to create this design right here. As you can see on my iPad. Now, in order to create that design, actually, I'm going to save a copy of it. Then I'm going to go to my images, bring up that image, and transfer it onto one of my design patterns here. Please remember the skinny one is the side profile of your car and the wider one is the looking down or the, the bird's eye view of the car you might say. So this one's a very straightforward design. Looks to me like it comes up ever a little bit kind of shallow, and then it seems to almost flatten out. So this comes up kind of shallow, and then I think it flattens out. It's a very simple silhouette. want to make sure that it's thick enough to be able to handle adding the lead to it later, and I think that will. The more complicated shape is the, the bird's eye view of it, which I'm only going to draw half of because of the fact that I'm going to want to make it exactly symmetrical and that I'll cover later on in the demonstration. So I'm going to draw half of the, of the design, not the whole design. So your step one at this point is to get me to sign this paper. So you need to show me designs that I can look at and go, okay, that works. Okay? Then I will sign your paper. Once I've signed your paper, then you can cut out your profile photo or your side, your side image of your car. I need a block of wood. Can't see you. Take my profile design and lay it onto my block. Then I'm going to need to make sure that it's the right length. So I'm actually going to bend it over the edge, making sure it's the correct length, and to cut off the extra. Because it needs to be exactly the same size. Otherwise, I run the risk of it not being a perfect image on the other side. On this particular one, it wouldn't have mattered, but on your car it might very well make a difference. So you need to hold this nice and steady. You might even tape it down if you want to. But one way or the other, I'm going to trace this design on here. Carefully. Then I'm going to make sure that I put it in the mirror image on the other side, or the, the same the same direction on the other side. Sometimes people will flip these things around and have it completely wrong. So please be careful as you're drawing this. Although if you don't do it correctly, I'll catch it. Because the next thing you're going to do after this is not cut it. You're going to take a square and you're going to transfer lines from one side to the other to help yourself make sure that everything is lined up. That line right there line right here. And this is where I tell you that we do not live in the world of Harry Potter and there's no such thing as magic. <laughs> this square is not magical. You can't just lay it down on something, draw a line and go, hey look, it's square. Okay? Square only works if you actually hold it up against the side carefully and then draw your line, at which time it becomes square. 
Okay, people are all the time doing silly things that they think is square. There's a spot here where it changes angles. I'm actually going to take a moment to draw this line all the way across so that I can make sure that those are lined up with each other later on. I want to make sure those lines line up with each other. Okay. Now once you have drawn your design on both sides, drawn your connecting things, you bring it to me, I will check it, make sure they're lined up with each other, and I'll sign the bottom. Okay. Once I've signed the bottom, then you're able to start cutting. Excuse me. Remember, if you don't want in this video, you probably don't want to stand in this with me. Now, the tool we're going to be using for this is called a coping saw. Coping saw only cuts in one direction, which is why I know that I'm not going to cut my finger as I do this. But if I go the other way, it would definitely cut my finger. Okay? The, the teeth are pointed downward, so it cuts on one direction only. It cuts on the downstroke of the saw, you might say. I'm going to use my fingers here to kind of guide my blade, to kind of keep it straight. And then I'm going to start cutting. At this point, you don't want to be sitting down. Sitting down is going to make you lazy. It's going to make you less likely to be doing a good job. I'm going to get it started. And then as I'm cutting, I'm going to continuously be looking on both sides while I'm cutting. I want to make sure that I stay on the throwaway side of that line the whole time. I stay on the throwaway side of this line, then I should be able to use a file to get down to the line later. As soon as I cut over that line, then I have to change the design of my car because I've cut too much wood away. side, I guarantee you this side would look horrible. And that's me, with the skills that I have. So don't assume that you're good enough to be able to follow the line on one side and have it naturally follow the line on the other side. You have to watch both sides, otherwise it's not going to come out well. Okay. Now, I'm going to fit the, the, the board in here, and I'm going to take a moment to look at the side here and make sure that it looks like it's perpendicular to the floor. I don't want it to be at an angle like that, because as I use this file here, I want to keep it flush to the table as well, or perpendicular to the floor table as well, and in the process, I'll make it flat, whereas if this is at an angle and I put this thing like this, it's going to make the whole thing wonky. And then you have to redesign it. Now the design that I'm doing in this, this class is my easiest design, at least this profile is because it's got two flat surfaces. If your design was a little more complex, you'd have a more difficult time. Something else I want you to do is make sure that your, your wood is above the, the level of this metal vise because I don't want you running this thing against the metal vise and wearing out the teeth. Now, this is by far a very easy design, because the truth is all I'm really worrying about is one line and two angles. A more complex car would take a lot more effort. Okay. So I have a nice flat top, straight flat side like that. That's done with a rough file. Now the rough file can be dangerous, not to you getting hurt, dangerous because 
Hey, girl. Um, Scoot your head back, please. If I take a file to this thing without without being careful, it can break out. There we go. There's some chunks of wood. If you're not careful, you can chunk out pieces of wood because your file's so rough. So you need to make sure that when you're working with your file, so at least the very rough files, that you're being careful. Take it nice and easy on it. Because if you hit it with something too hard, you can really do some damage. I'm going to switch to a finer file now and smooth this out. Now some of you might be thinking right now, shouldn't you cut the other design first? The answer to that question is no. I want you to start out by cleaning up this cut first because it's going to be a lot easier if you have a if you have it all in place. Something else I'd like to point out back in a moment. Excuse me. If you have a flat surface, you can also use this board right here. Which will make it absolutely flat. And this is a perfect tool for this purpose because both of my surfaces are flat. Grab me a bench dog right there behind me. What is it? Bench dog, all the kids who pay attention to class. If I stop bench dog, Good for making things perfectly flat. You still need to make sure that you're keeping them straight. Okay, now this angle here. Yes. Did you go to the, see her already? Yeah. Okay. What was your question? Um, are we going to start doing this tomorrow? Yes. Well, it depends on whether you get your work signed today or not, or tomorrow or not. All right. So now that I have straightened out my per my profile, my side view, and now I'm going to cut out my top view. In cutting out my top view, I'm, I'm going to cut out the whole rectangle all in one shot. Jasmine, is that definitely recording? Do you see the numbers at the top going up? Yeah. Oh. Kind of a drag if you weren't recording. So I'm going to cut out the entire rectangle like that. Then I'm going to fold it very carefully in half, being very careful. First period, I made the mistake of not being careful enough with this and ended up having a lot of extra work to do trying to clean up my, me my mess right down the center, and you're going to do just like you were doing in kindergarten when you cut out your heart, in the sense that you're going to cut both sides at the same time, thus making it absolutely symmetrical. And then when you open this thing back up, it is the same on both sides. All right, now... I'm going to lay this on top here, and I'm going to draw the shape very carefully. Ms. Jolson? Yeah? We didn't do that last semester, right? No? I didn't do what? That? Yeah, we did. We did? You may not have, depending on the card you did. Oh. But yeah. Trace your car on here. Now I'm going to mark this location on the side, all these locations on the side. Here. I'm going to transfer those lines across the other side using the square. To make sure that everything is lining up. 
This is something I didn't do second period that I, re that I wished I had done because it definitely made it much e more easily, much more easy to be accurate. If I had drawn these lines across the second period, I would have been much better off than I was. What you learn. Okay. So now, that I, now I'm able to look at either this side or this side and see where the beginning and ends of those are. Put this in here. And I'm going to very carefully cut these out. Once again, making sure that I do not overcut my line. I want to make sure that I leave extra wood for me to remove later because it'll be easy easier if I can file it down easily I can file away wood easily what I can't do is bring the wood back once I've gotten rid of it the whole time I'm trying to make sure that my my Coping saw isn't moving at weird angles. lines that I drew on the side of the of it. Also making sure that I'm not at a weird angle of any kind. Going right down to the line that I drew. Making sure that I'm hitting these two lines that I drew on the side. For this curve on the front, which you can't see, but basically looks like this little curve on the front here, I'm just going to use a file rather than cutting it, because it's a small amount of wood to remove. And I'm better off just filing it off. Take me less time. In fact, I'm going to use this thing right here in a moment to clean that up. Just halfway. Now the other half, I'm going to turn it around. Once again, I'm being mindful of this line that I created. If I go over that line, then it's gonna, then, then it's no longer gonna look symmetrical. You can also sometimes use these. You can sand your sides to kind of clean them up. You can also kind of make curves like that. Try to clean up a curve like that as well. to turn in for full credit on this project. Okay, this basically filed and smooth, 
When you get to this point and all your major scratches are done, I'll give you a piece of this rough sandpaper for you to go over it. You sand the whole thing down, make it look finished, and this is all you have to produce for the full credit for the project. At this point, you can add lead, you can work on your axles, we'll put the wheels on, we'll paint it, and all that stuff. All that stuff works towards extra credit and for having fun with the Pinewood Derby races. But this is what you're required to do. The end. Oh.